Welcome all for the second session of the webinar series for epigenetic analysis in cybers. My name is Upendra Devishetty and I am your host for today's webinar. Today there is only one speaker uh, speaking on epigenetic analysis and so there is lots of opportunity to ask questions. So please, please uh, type in your questions in the chat box provided and the speaker will get back to you either in the middle of the presentation or at the end of uh, the presentation. As a reminder, this uh, webinar is being recorded and all the links including YouTube and MP4 files as well as the slides for this webinar will be provided to you all uh, within the next 24 hours. So without further ado, uh, let me uh, welcome Blake Joyce who is the present presenter for today's webinar. Uh, Blake did his PhD in plant, soil, and insects in the University of Tennessee. Uh, he recently joined a uh, science informatics team. Uh, before that, he worked in COSI team for two, uh, two years. Um, Blake's background is primarily focused in plant microbiology and biotechnology, with particular emphasis on pathway engineering and functional characterization. Uh, currently, is working on integrating the high throughput phenotyping with genetic and climatic data. Blake has taught several software carpentry courses and also several courses as adjunct professor. Today, he'll be uh, showing some of those visualizations of the analysis that were done in webinar one in COSI. Uh, and again, I want to remind you that please type in your questions in the chat box provided and uh, Blake will be able to answer them as soon as uh, they are there. Um, Blake, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, so I'm happy to be here this morning. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, showing you guys some new tools that we have and some old tools that we have for Koji. Um, this was all built by uh, Jeff Grover, who is a graduate student um, that rotated through the Koji group, and uh, with assistance from Matt Baumhoff. And so I am presenting it. Um, my job as a science informat informatician at Cybers is kind of to um, explain the science to a lot of the computational scientists and so we do also a lot of outreach uh, type things. This is going to be a live demo um, so please do stop me at any time. This is not a lecture whatsoever. Um, if you just put your chats into the chat screen there, Pendra will stop me and I will look at the chat screen. All right. Let's see here. Let's switch over. Mm -hmm. Share my screen with you guys. Can you guys see the Firefox? Okay. Say Zoom. All right. So this is the Koji main page. Um, Koji stands for Comparative Genomics. It's a web-based platform um, that actually has several tools. It's federated with the um, with Cybers, and so it shares a lot of the back-end capabilities that Cybers has, um, and has and adds new functionalities to uh, Cybers uh, on the front end. So in general, there's a lot of uh, comparative genomics uh, tools. Uh, SynMap will allow you to, to compare two entire genomes um, and look at areas of sentinel between those. Um, and we may be able to talk a little bit about some of those tools, but really what we'd like to talk about today is how to pull, da pull data um, from the cyber data store and then actually move that into Koji and uh, visualize it. And some of the interesting things you can do in the JBrowse, uh, uh, Koji's version of JBrowse. Um, so uh, I've signed in already. So I'm going to go to my data. And here, this tracks, uh, this is sort of a central point in Koji for any user. When you sign in, it'll track uh, all of these, um, uh, all of your data. It'll also track all of your analyses. It will track um, data that is in the process of being loaded. 
it'll track any, uh, any metadata that you have associated with data um, and your actual base genomes and experiments. Uh, genomes are just going to be any uh, organism's genome that you've uploaded or has been shared with you. Experiments is what we call things that go on top of uh, genomes. Usually they're RNA-seq or they're SNP, uh, SNP uh, tracks or there are BAM alignments or something like that. So let's actually start off by bringing in a, a new experiment uh, from some methylation data. So what we can do, I'm going to name it, solution test. Here you, you put a version. Um, if you're pulling this from a canonical res, uh, resource like NCBI or something like that, the version number will match to their versioning number. And then we always put in our source. So in this case, it is NCBI. And we're going to work with uh, an Arabidopsis Thaliana data set that we have. And it's actually Columbia. So once we've selected the genome, uh, we can actually load data on top of that genome. When you move, to, uh, when you do next, it'll take you to the data tab. And now you're looking at ways that you can pull data into Koji. So um, last week, uh, the, everything that was done was done on the, in the Cybers uh, data store and in the discovery environment. And um, so here, there's a lot of um, different, you know, all my different data and all of uh, different folders that I have. But um, there's a Koji underscore. This all is sitting in the Koji underscore on your uh, data store. So let me show you that real quick. So here's the data tab, and inside of everybody's, uh, inside of everyone's uh, discovery environment, uh, you'll have your data tab, and then within here, you'll actually see a folder called Koji underscore data. That gets pre-populated, and any data you put into this folder is then visible in Koji. So we, you give us express permission to look at any of the data that's in here. It's not, it's not public by any means, but it just allows you to say, there's some stuff that I'd like to move into Koji, there's a lot of stuff that maybe I don't want to move into Koji or I just want to keep it separate. So you'll notice that uh, we're going to be using this Columbia track right here. And so that's visible here in Koji. So this is the same, and there's that same data uh, right here. You can also pull data in using an FTP or HTTP. So uh, you can pull from uh, Ensemble or other uh, databases that way. You can do a local upload um, here just from your computer. And we actually have tracks into uh, the SRA at NCBI that allows you to pull information from there as well. So here's the name of the file I'm gonna pull in. And you'll notice that it's actually gzipped, that is that it's been kind of uh, compressed or archived. Koji will automatically recognize that and uncompress it when it starts to run. But here we're just going to tell it that it's a fast queue, which is, you can tell from this end here. And then, if you hit next, we're going to see all the different options that are available for FASTQ formats. You can tell it if it's single in or paired in. Um, you can trim the file, so you can actually upload raw, raw untrimmed uh, data, and then cut adapt or trim galore. Koji will actually trim these. If you have already trimmed it yourself, then you just hit none. These haven't been trimmed, so we'll go ahead and use this. Um, it actually will select and do an alignment. So you can, we uh, auto-populate uh, GSNAP, but we have Bowtie, TopAt2, HiSat2, but these are the two important ones for methylation data, Bismarck and BWA Meth. Bismarck is one of the more popular tools available um, in the community, so we've, this was the first one that was integrated. And BWA Meth is also pretty popular, so that was later. Uh, so here's Bismarck, it auto-populates, and now Koji knows that you're uploading methylation data and not just raw sequencing from a transcription. Or something like this. Then you can actually have these other uh, analyses run in the pipeline. If you want to do an expression analysis, you just click enable. There's options here that you're going, that you can change. We have documentation for each of these options, and I'll show you that here in just a little bit after we uh, started doing this. You can also identify SNPs, so we're going to go ahead and do that. 
of this, we have an in-house, uh, very naive SNP identification tool, but we also have SAM tools and Platypus, which are also uh, very popular. And then here is the actual methylation um, uh, analysis. So we're gonna enable that. Um, there's a few uh, options here, but really the most important would be to deduplicate. This will remove anything uh, from PCR reactions that are sort of artifacts from those PCR reactions. Um, it, it runs one of the uh, Bismarck tools to remove that duplication. <clears throat> and then uh, there's other options, but one of the most interesting options and probably useful for doing organization is this idea of a notebook. Koji has a way of organizing um, notebooks, uh, organizing genomes and your experiments all together in named notebooks. So if you have a big project that has, I don't know, 10 genomes and 100 experiments, you can keep them all together and then share that notebook with your collaborators or make it public and it becomes very easy to access all that information in one place. So in this case, I haven't done any work yet. We're just now uploading a, a, the first piece of data. So I'm gonna tell it to create a notebook. And then when it's finished, you can actually have Koji send you an email so you don't have to watch uh, Koji running the pipeline. So we'll select all those options. And we'll hit next. And the very last is to actually look over here and do review and submit. And it's always nice just to kind of look through and make sure that everything makes sense. And then we're just going to press start. So everything starts to run automatically at that. This is a completely automatic, uh, automatic pipeline once you hit start. Um, you'll notice that it's doing a lot of different steps. And as, uh, as Koji runs them, it'll, it'll go from running to completed. You can actually get back to these analyses by using this unique URL. So just for argument's sake, we'll go ahead and open that up. And so here you can actually share this with, uh, with your collaborators or your boss or otherwise and say, hey, this is analysis running. Uh, we can check back on it whenever. If you're signed in up here at the top right and you're with your Cyverse credentials, you can actually close this and you can find that analysis running right here in the data loading. So here's that load experiment, our methylation test. Hey Blake, I have a question. Okay, great. So uh, the question is like, if you don't save the URL, how do you check back on the analysis? Okay, uh, yeah, that's this, that's this section right here. So uh, this panel right here underneath activity, it'll actually track, Koji will track your analyses and any of the data you're loading. So here is that experiment loading right here. So if you close the, if you close that um, the web page uh, without actually recording that, all you have to do is double click there, and here we are back at our analysis. Does that answer the question? Yeah. All right, great. And you can see that uh, the first two steps have already completed, and this is gonna run. Um, on average, depending on your uh, data size, this will run for several hours. Um, one of the largest data sets that we've tested was a paired in data set. It was um, 100 gigabytes in total. It was some maze uh, data sets, and it ran for about 18 hours. So that's the very longest run that we've ever seen, or, or have benchmarked anyway. Um, but for 100 gigs, that's not so bad, I think. Um, so while this is loading, I'm actually going to move on and show you some of the other things that Koji can do. Okay, so we're back here. Um, as you, as this uh, loads, you'll actually start to see um, experiments populating in your in this uh, folder here, um, and then. We can actually move over and look at these individually once those once this data is finished loading, and when this does finish loading, it'll go from uh, running to completed. And you'll be able to see all of the data tracks that were created um, from that particular loading. Now, I have actually already set up. Um, actually, let me do this. So while we're waiting, um, you can always if you have any trouble, we have Kojipedia. It's our wiki for explaining various tools. So in this case, um, we'll just do a little Kojipedia methylation analysis. And this is all the documentation that was put together by Jeff and Matt. And it goes through in detail of kind of a general overview of what this pipeline does and won't do. Um, it gives you some insight into any requirements for your data. So for instance, your data name needs to be named in a particular way, um, R1, R2, or one and two at the end, if it's a paired in a set of files. 
And then it actually will explain the workflow and all of the options that we saw earlier. So if you ever have questions, you can come here to Codepedia and look at these explanations. If that doesn't uh, actually answer your questions, we have a link to uh, Bismarck, the source document uh, documentation. And if that doesn't answer your question, you can email Koji. Um, you can email Koji help underneath the contact us right here. And here's all of our names. Here's me. Still there. And you can, uh, you can email Koji help here and uh, get reach, you know, outreach. Um, you reach out to us to ask questions about any of these things. So that's our documentation. We also have documentation in general for um, load experiment. That was that was the uh, pipeline that we were using. So the methylation uh, pipeline is actually part of this overall uh, load experiment. And it'll handle uh, many different types of file formats and different kinds of what we call experiments, that is to say additional data about genomes. One of the most popular, of course, would be SNPs, so you load those up in a DCF. And here's all of our documentation about that. So uh, while we wait for the loaded load genome, we're, let's actually look at what uh, comes out of the pipeline. So I'm going to go to shared with me. And I'm going to search for Arabidopsis. And so here's some uh, sequencing um, that was shared with me. You'll, you'll notice that there's a lot of different experiments. And this is the actual, what the experiment looks like. There's a lot of information here, but we, we believe that more information is always better. Right? So at first, this is the info that we loaded up when we were loading the experiment. Koji assigns a unique ID, so that you can always go back and find that. Um, it gives us the name that you have here and all of the other information that you've input. But there's also a way of uploading metadata, such as citations and otherwise, um, onto Koji. You can either do it by hand or there's a bulk loader as well. And if you guys are interested in that, I'm happy to show you that uh, later on. But if we click Browse, that's going to take us to JBrowse, where we can actually see all of this data and the experiments. And one last thing to mention as well here, I'll go ahead and show. Underneath the metadata tag here, back at your main page uh, where you signed in, um, you can actually see all of your experiments and all the different types of um, metadata that you've loaded up. And then these are all searchable as well um, using our search tool. Okay, so this is the experiment. Over here on the right, this is a standard uh, JBrowse um, layout. We have a CDS that's visible. You can see the sequence if you'd like to. I'm just going to show the CDS for now. And we can see that there's, uh, here's all of our coding regions. And then here's the methylation data. But in this case, uh, it's turned up kind of pink. So we can actually change those colors to be a little bit more visible. I'm from Georgia, so I'll go with dark red. There we go. So now these are a little bit more visible. Um, you can also, Really, the power of Koji is that you can start to look at your data, but also compare it across many different kinds of data and see interactions between data, which can be kind of difficult in other, uh, in other assessment pipelines. So for instance, here's methylation data that we have from Arabidopsis. But what if we wanted to compare that to, let's say, SNPs, to see how SNPs are interfering? Here is all the SNPs that are associated with this particular genome, Arabidopsis thaliana. And we can go down here. And let's see, I like Bach. So we can actually visualize all of these uh, different SNPs. But we can also uh, search through these SNPs or search through this data to see uh, all the different kinds. So um, we can to compare them as well. So we can find SNPs that are just in the CDS. Perhaps we're only interested in, in ones in the CDS. And Koji will actually go through and filter out anything and create a new track that any of those SNPs that are not in the CDS.
and I'm going to do them for all seven of the chromosomes, including the mitochondria. So it takes a little while to do the computation. Not too bad. And then here we can actually search through uh, different SNP types, and we can move that. We can move this up to compare our SNPs to here. And then uh, in just a few minutes, I'll actually show you how you can take these SNPs and overlay them on top of your methylation data to find um, you know, methylation patterns that are within SNPs or otherwise. This is a, a new feature. It's not in production quite yet, but it will be um, pretty shortly. And actually, any of these marker tracks, you can compare to quantitative tracks, just dragging and dropping them on top of each other and asking for the intersection of those two tracks. And also in the SNPs, uh, we have this ability to, to skip through them in case that, you know, you, some of these uh, could be really uh, sparse. So instead of, like here, you don't see any SNPs in this particular view. So in many genome browsers, uh, you have to actually search around for the next SNP of interest. Here, you just use that find, and it will take you to the next one by using these arrows. And so that becomes very useful. You can also search for gene names or any of the feature names and jump to genes of interest. So, for instance, ATG1. Of course, the joy of the lab for We have a question? Uh, no, I mean, um, if you want an example, I have it here. Example of the gene you want to look at. Okay. okay that's there. So here you can actually see that I've searched all of the chromosomes uh, looking for AT1. Um, and the particular name is human rabidopsis that will only put up, pull up genes on the first chromosome. They all auto populate over here. And if you actually have a gene of interest, perhaps you're interested in this one. It'll actually jump you to that section without having to look for those base pairs and know where that gene is in those chromosomes. So that's a really nice feature, and that's a newer feature that we've added to JBAS um, in the last few months. So actually, while we're thinking about it, let me uh, go over to our development server. So this is uh, our development, but I will show you that one um, there's two new features because it starts to allow you to actually do interactive um, analyses. So really what we're trying to do is get JBrowse to a point where you can actually start to do on-the-fly analyses while looking at your data and then comparing between many different kinds of data and looking at your genome and otherwise and try to get in there and see interactions between uh, data types and find interesting things. So here's that same track. I'm going to add that SNP data. I believe we did box seven. And I'll put the genes back up there just so that we can see that. So here's our CDS at the top. Here's all of our genes, including regions. Here's the methylation, and here's the SNP. If you actually select and hold and drag the name and then press command it, and drop it, you'll see the plus sign, um, and you can actually add them together. And so here, uh, Koji will actually find the intersection of these two data types. And you can choose for all of the chromosomes, or you can just choose for any one of them. I'll just do, let's do all of them, see how fast it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what it's doing now is it's actually taking this track, and it's finding any times that the SNPs from this track match up to the base pair here. Um, in the methylation track. And you'll see that that brings it down to just the ones that are in those SNPs. So you can start to investigate interesting parts of biology. Perhaps SNPs affect methylation patterns. And here you can actually start to look and see exactly where they are and find genes of interest and see how those um, you know, interact. And because you can scroll through the hits over here, you can actually um, you know, move all the way to the end and see each one of these. And you don't have to hunt and search for them. So these are some of the new ones. You can also take uh, methylation tracks, uh, which are quantitative tracks, and you can actually change them into um, 
Oh, sorry. You can actually change them into marker tracks if you want to bolt together regions of your methylation data. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to search. And this is also a really new feature that uh, we've added to JBrowse. This is now looking across the whole track, um, the whole methylation data track, and it's seeing all of the different uh, quantities that are associated with all that data, and then giving you a history. So perhaps you're interested in areas of really low methylation, or maybe you're interested in high methylation areas. You can actually filter that by just selecting the graph, or if there's strict requirements or cutoffs, you can add them here. You can also do the min and max. So in this case, we'll just create a track by searching these, uh, these uh, Lower, this lower section, and that will generate a whole new track with those um, requirements and put a new track that's down here. And of course, with this new track, you can also do these intersections like we've done before, and we, uh, you can also uh, move them around and play with them as other value shown. So here's the intersection that we created. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Here is that range that we created. So now we've only found sections that have that low methylation pattern. We can zoom in to actually see these areas. So here they are. But then we can actually change uh, this track into a marker track. So you may be interested. So you can save it as a quantitative track and keep that forever and put it into a notebook by adding it to a notebook here. Um, we can name it um, you know, methylation under. Uh, 0.04, I think is what I selected. And then here, if you save this as a marker track, you can actually bulk them together as I was talking about. So here, if you put in 100 base pairs, it'll take any of those methylation um, uh, calls within 100 base pairs of each other and actually create one long marker, like so. And so this way you can visualize areas or create regions uh, of your genome that actually have that methylation pattern. So we'll press execute. So basically what it does is it creates a whole new experiment and it'll save that as a marker and then uh, you know, represent it as those long rectangle markers. Hey Blake, while it's uh, loading, I have a yes. question. So do you know why the snake tracks are being displayed as histogram? Yes, these uh, SNP tracks are actually um, here. It, it's uh, in the metadata for these SNP tracks. These are actually averages of 1,000 base pairs. So um, regular SNP tracks are usually shown like. Let's see if we can find. This is some uh, metadata that they they created, so we can find SNPs. Oh, I should also mention you can actually find particular types of SNPs as well. Um, this is a very new feature, and so you can actually, if you're interested in SNPs only from one uh, particular base to another, or deletions or insertions, you can search search just for those. So. Then we can zoom in. And so here you'll see that this is the normal way that those SNPs are, are uh, actually shown. They're A's to T, or A to G, or C to G. This. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, here, you're, if you zoom out, uh, that's the other thing about uh, most of these uh, genome browsers. If you zoom out, it's going to show you information at that level. So if you want really detailed information, you've got to kind of zoom in, and then you'll be able to see uh, the actual CVS. You'll be able to see these SNPs, everything else. Okay. So here you can see the introns and the uh, exons uh, of the CDS, and then here's the SNPs within that. If you zoom in far enough, you'll actually start to see the base pairs if you uh, add the sequence from yeah. yeah. So this is the, the methylation rendering, that marker that we created a, a few minutes ago. And here, this section had many sections within 100 base pairs that were methylated underneath that region of the search. So now you're actually starting to do sort of data discovery on the fly um, and you know, kind of finding interesting patterns or looking at interesting sections of your data. 
and actually cross comparing between sequence, uh, SNPs, um, and otherwise. Right. So those are our new features. That is, um, that is our uh, JBrowse and how it stands. We're always looking for new suggestions um, or insights into uh, new tools or useful things to add to either JBrowse or to Code Jable. Um, just to back up, let me show you a few of these tools. Um, again, uh, Code the SynMap is one of our more popular tools. It'll compare two entire uh, genomes to each other. And actually, I'll show you an output. And then show areas of sensitivity and something that you can do sort of whole, uh, whole genome comparisons. Let's see, analysis. So here, this is a comparison between maize, uh, corn, and sorghum. And every, all these dots are single gen, uh, centenic gene pairs. And so as you look across each of these chromosomes, you can actually see um, centenic areas. And you'll notice that sorghum has one, two areas um, for every spot on sorghum, there's two in the maize. And so that denotes a whole genome duplication. You can also see inversion events and genomes and otherwise. And then a new tool that we have will actually assess um, gene uh, fractionation um, after those whole genome duplications and, and can assess where the genes are on what chromosomes between these two. So this is looking at the sorghum uh, first chromosome. As you go left to right, all the genes are on that chromosome. And then this is the chromosomes in maize and where they are and what percentage of those genes have been retained on each of these chromosomes in maize. One of the more uh, useful features, as I mentioned before, is to regenerate this analysis, all you have to do is uh, save this URL, or you can just keep it here. But perhaps one of the most useful things to do with this URL is to copy it and paste it into publications, and that way reviewers or anyone in the future can actually come back to this exact analysis and see how you ran it, and they can look through all of your analysis, and they can see all your display options, and they can see which versions of the genome that you've used, um, and so basically that creates a highly reproducible analysis that, you know, will be saved in perpetuity. These unique URLs get saved in Koji um, for as long as Koji exists and the internet exists. Okay. Um, in uh, addition to... Uh, sir? Uh, can you talk a little bit about how notebooks work in Koji? Yes, that's a great idea. Thank you. So we have a notebook section here. You can create notebooks inside of those analyses, uh, as I showed you earlier. But actually, if you want to create one beforehand, um, we'll call this methylation test notebook. And you can give descriptions for your collaborators or for yourself in a year or two. And we can create a notebook. And that will actually register here in the notebook tab in, the, in your My Data. And if you open that up, you can see uh, the, the notebook outlay. Now this is restricted, but I could actually uh, share this or even make it public. So in this case, I'm actually going to make it public. And that will register. And here you'll see that it's not restricted anymore. And so now anything that I put into this notebook is then uh, viewable. Or anything within the notebook that is viewable by the public is also viewable um, in this notebook. So you can actually keep private data inside of the notebook, make the notebook public, and only the public data within that notebook will be visible. And so that, that's, it. that's kind of, um, we always want to make sure that you explicitly tell us what to make public. And we have redundancy so that you don't accidentally make something public that you don't want to be public. You can add contents. So there's stuff, that my stuff is going to be anything in your my data, and it's all searchable. And as I have more than a thousand results, let's just look for something in the Rabbitopsis. And so all of these uh, searches and, and uh, results are being done in, in real time. So here it didn't find anything. Ah, I misspelled Robert Opsis. There you go. 
And so this is the speed of analysis. This isn't uh, re recorded pre previously. And so this is sort of uh, at the speed of uh, being able to come in here and start to play around with your data and investigate it kind of in real time. And that's sort of, that's really the main goal of Koji or one of the main goals of Koji. So here I found a Rabidopsis thaliana. It's inside of my stuff. So I'm gonna add that genome here and it'll populate here under the genomes tab. And it also keeps track of how many genomes and of what, uh, and different types of experiments that you have. So in addition to a genome, maybe I want to load up an experiment. So let's add some Rabidopsis experiments. And let's actually look around for anything that was any methylation data that may exist inside of Koji for Rabidopsis. Just Rabidopsis that out. So really, uh, once you make uh, make your data public, you can now start to actually find other people's uh, experiments or genomes and start to bring those in. Ah, uh, here we go. So Kermans, let's say that I, let's actually go ahead and select all of those. We'll add those. And let's add some SNPs as well. These are data that other people have made public. And so now we can actually easily discover other people's data and then use that in our own analyses to build you know, more powerful sort of meta-analyses. Add new data that you've created compared to other data that's been published previously. So I add those and here they populate here. And here's all of the information about that data and who owns it, uh, who actually put it in, so this idea of provenance is really important. Who created the data? Who's done things to the data? Can you, and being able to be able to track that back to data creation for now and in perpetuity. This idea of provenance is really important, um, especially for publication or for recreation of your experiments or your analyses. Being able to find this data and then actually know who, who it came from, who to credit, uh, is really, really important for Koji and in general for science. It starts to lead towards reproducible data, but also it gives people uh, the credit that's due. So there's uh, the notebook. You can add genomes and experiments. Um, of course, you can also, once you've made it public, you can also make it private again. If for some reason you've added things in here that you don't want people to see, you just click that and it's as easy as that. You can also add metadata to this notebook. So in general, um, generally the way that I use notebooks is everything that I do for a single uh, publication, goes into a, a single notebook. I add metadata to this notebook um, as I go along uh, about what is in the notebook, what kind of experiments are in the notebook. Um, you can add all that information here. Um, and then ultimately, I'll add a publication, inf uh, publication information into this and then make it public. And so now anyone can discover this. All of their data is here. All the information about where to find it and pub publish is up here as well as all the biological information about the data is available here. And then they can actually find me uh, as I'm the owner of this notebook. And so you have this, re -dis you have this highly discoverable environment to find uh, data a year, two years, three years, four years, 10 years from now. All right. So with that, that's some of the major uh, aspects of Koji. Again, uh, this is running, this uh, pipeline is running still. These first few steps are actually the longest. So this, uh, I benchmarked this a few days ago. It takes about two hours for about 2.5 uh, gigabytes uh, the, the data that we uh, upload. So this is gonna run and then send me an email uh, this weekend probably uh, when, when it completes, okay? So this is the major overview. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to take those now. Okay, so please go ahead and type in your questions and Blake will be here for the next 10, 15 minutes uh, for the questions to be answered, so. So uh, Blake, you said that you already uh, ran the methylation experiment before and benchmarked it. Can you show us some of those results? Uh, yes, that was actually the results I was showing you guys here in JBrowse. Oh, okay. This is it here. Uh, the SNPs I didn't upload. This is somebody else's SNPs. Here's all their information associated with that. It was part of the uh, 1001 Genome Project. 
So the, I was comparing, basically what I was doing is I was comparing, sorry for not being obvious about that. I was comparing uh, data that I uploaded uh, here previously. That was, it was actually experimental data that was public that was provided to me. And I was comparing it to data that I did not upload that was just made public. Uh, do you have the results for the mapping, not just methylation? Yes, uh, yeah. Let's go up here. So you're just looking, you wanted to see the alignment? Yeah. Is that what it was? Okay. Okay. So uh, this isn't my alignment, this is somebody else's, but, uh, oh, here's, there we go. So here's the actual methylation, the Bismarck output at the BAM uh, for our Columbia methylation. You can see each of, uh, each of the alignments here. And those are also uh, searchable and discoverable if you have uh, one of particular interest. Okay, so uh, this is a related question on that. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, do you, can you show us how load experiment adds BAM uh, read depth and process data automatically in the pipeline one? Uh, how, it, how it adds? Yeah. Do you mean uh, in the pipeline itself? Yeah, in the pipeline itself. Oh, like the, the pipeline that's running? Yeah. Oh, okay, yes. Sure. Can we see that real time or? Yes. Uh, the analysis being done in real time? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, when, it, when you go to data loading, you can, you know, as this is running, you can see when they complete in real time. So uh, trimming just got com uh, completed. Oh, it's just the logs. Okay. Yeah, it's just the logs. Yeah. Are you wanting to see the BAMs being added? Yeah. As oh, I see. No. Uh, so Koji will finish these uh, these runs for the the BAM alignments, and then once they're all complete, it creates a single experiment, uh, an experimental file that you saw before, and then all of that gets loaded as one piece. It doesn't get added, uh, you know, piecewise, piecemeal. Okay, so uh, this is another question. So does COSI uh, can do gene set enrichment or pathway analysis? Are those features yeah, so in COSI? Those are not. Um, so here's, this is probably the most important thing that I will, uh, that I should have showed you earlier, I forgot to. Any one of these tracks, you can save them and export them um, outside of COSI. So this is that track. If you were interested in something about these tracks and you wanted to do other downstream analyses, you can save them to your local computer, or you can actually move them right back out to your cybers data store in that Koji underscore data, right, where we were before. And so that's, this, this is really important as well for us because we do some things really well, but we don't do everything. So if you're looking to do uh, annotation or um, you know, uh, network analysis or otherwise, we can we we want you to be able to move your data out seamlessly and take that to somewhere where you can actually do that data analysis that specializes in that particular kind of analysis. Maybe Cybers so, is the best place to do that because we have all the apps available in Cybers. So. Yeah, exactly. So everything that's available in Cybers, uh, it, you can easily move your data in and out of Koji and then do continue analyses in Cybers or elsewhere for that matter. Um, and then you can bring that back to Koji for visualization. And, and then you can bring it back to Koji, exactly, uh, for visualization. And so really the idea is to create this ecosystem of operability, interoperability, right? No one thing, no one platform, including ours, does everything perfectly. And so that's why we've connected it all together by Cyverse and in the data store to minimize how much you have to move. So I use the word moving, but it actually doesn't really move uh, so much. Moving from the Koji server to the data store in Cyverse is basically seamless, and it happens at incredibly high transfer rates. So just for um, argument's sake, I'm gonna say test data, and I'm gonna save it as a VCF mm -hmm. to my Cybers data store, and then I'm gonna go over here to my Cybers data store really quickly. Here's my Koji data, I'm gonna press refresh. Side too long.
And then by the time this uh, logs in, it will already be in the data store. And so it happens blindingly fast. Uh, fast. Um, one of the things that we try to minimize is how much data you have to move over a Wi-Fi or over a hardline connection, because oftentimes that's the biggest wait step for doing these analyses. Let's see, there's my test data. It's already saved. So you can upload and transfer uh, hundreds of gigabytes back and forth between Koji and Cybers fairly seamlessly and incredibly quickly. So when you move the data from Koji to uh, Discover Environment, do you get the notification similarly when you upload some files from your local computer? Uh, I don't think you do. I'm, I'm, I don't see a notification here. I would normally. That is a great pull request. I will look into that. Okay. Thank you. I also want to add that, like, we don't want to, I mean, because we won't, don't want to add those tools because we don't want to uh, duplicate the efforts since all those apps are available in Discovery Environment, so. Right, yeah, and I, I should mention that one of the most powerful things um, about federating with Cyverse is that it, uh, Cyverse does all of the, um, the data management, the data infrastructure management, it does all of the login and security management. Um, and it basically allows uh, researchers to just get down to doing data analysis and visualization. And you don't have to, if you want to create a platform or create a database, you don't have to worry about security and you know, all the underlying uh, processes. And so uh, that's, one of the, that's one of the great benefits um, in addition to, you know, very quick uh, data transfer between platforms. Um, so Federating with Cyverse allows you just not to have to worry about all the really low level um, stuff and allows you to kind of just do the science and get down to the science really quickly. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No, I don't think there's any more questions. Okay. Give me one more minute. I can oh. wrap it up. Okay, uh, I think we should wrap it up. So thank you again for all joining uh, for the two webinar series for epigenetic analysis and discovery environment. I hope you enjoyed our webinar series. Do check in our website for more interesting uh, webinars and the registration details are available on the main website. And as a reminder, this uh, webinar recording is already been done on uh, the recording links including the youtube and mp4 files if there's any uh, slides they will be provided to you within the next 24 hours uh, so do check out for an email from me so with that i would like to thank blake and the other speakers in the first webinar um, and thank you again for joining our webinar series uh, have a nice day and a great weekend thank you bye <laughs>